Hello everyone. Today's instrument that we'll be using is called a tingsha. Sometimes called a tingsha chime or a tingsha bell, and oftentimes they're struck in this way, kind of horizontally. But I'm going to be playing them this way. And the idea here is because the sound, instead of going down, can be used to be directed. Now I'll also be playing a singing bowl, one of these singing bowls, Himalayan singing bowls. The difference between the two is that the singing bowl is hand hammered. The tinksha is cast. They're made of similar material, bronze, bronze alloy. Um, there's obviously differences, but essentially that's what they're made of. And these are cast individually. And what that means is that once they're cast, then this one here has to find its twin here. And it can be quite a business looking for them. There's hundreds or thousands of these things to look through. There's many that are cast and eventually they do find each other. So it's kind of romantic. They find their soulmate. And there may be a teeny bit of difference between the tones, but for the most part, it's the same note. Now, sometimes a difference can actually be a good thing because it can create different harmonics, much like relationships, really. So, we're going to be playing the tingsha. I have four of them to play today for you. And um, I'll also be sounding the singing bowl between them. It'll just make it a little bit more interesting and allow me to make the transition. So, as always, the most important thing that we do is to create the energy field. That's really so important and of course your intention is absolutely vital to the process so you're very much a part of of this um, and allow yourself to have an intention at this point and we will create the energy field or bring ourselves forward into the energy field is a better way of saying it it's already been created for us it's up to us to attune ourselves to it so we ask for the highest and purest light from the highest and purest source to surround and fill each one of us and the space we're in for the highest good. Now just allow yourself to place into the light whatever it is you wish at this time for yourself, for a loved one. You can place your country into the light, the health workers on the front lines, people who have lost their jobs and perhaps are struggling, maybe someone that you personally know that's having a difficult time at this time. It doesn't have to be difficulty. You can put your family in the light that they stay well and healthy. So there's a lot to be grateful for. But the big thing here is that we can place it into the light and let go. That's really the big thing. Let go of any anxieties, any worries or concerns. We place that into the light for the highest good and let it go. And now connect with your heart. So important that we bring the loving into all that we do. Think of someone you love and use that connection. It could be a pet, it could be a loved one, it could be a religious or spiritual figure. And use that connection to prime your loving and let that loving vibrate through your cells and through your being and then into your energy field and then into your environment and into the world. And so we have the love, the light, the sound. And let the sound be the carrier wave of your intention for the highest good into the field of grace so that it will manifest for you. We always ask for the highest good. That way, we know it's in the best and purest possible hands. And now relax in your intention. Allow the sound to take you wherever it goes. Perhaps it'll take you into a part of your body that needs release or relaxation maybe into your emotions, your mind, your unconscious, and perhaps into the spirit. 
where you can ask for the mystical traveler consciousness, that guide that is in within each one of us, to guide you for your highest good inwardly into who you are, who you truly are and beyond.